This place had different people here. They helped each other raise the children. They helped each other with the buildings, just looking at the walls of what's here, four, five, six-story high buildings for it to be still standing. The commitment to the community as a whole is the love for each other and wanting to make sure that people survived with the means that they had the best they could. That community involvement is the main concept of what the Puebloan people are today. Think of others before you think of yourself. Chaco is one of the most important developments that happened in North America through time. So that by about 1100, Chaco had five to 8,000 people in the canyon and in this area surrounding perhaps 25, 30,000 people. We're talking about a large group of organized people spread across a landscape. Our group and others have worked for almost a decade now to try to protect Chaco Canyon from the encroaching oil and gas development, which has in recent years crept closer and closer to the boundary of the national park. And as this has happened, individual sites have in many cases been protected, but then they develop wells and other oil and gas infrastructure all the way around these. So essentially this larger landscape has gotten compromised. And as I've worked with tribes over the last 10 years, it's become more and more clear to me just how important this landscape is to the groups who are descended from the people who built Chaco Canyon a thousand years ago. This place to us as Hopi is not known as Chaco. It's known as Yupkoivi to Hopi this is a place where we all gathered. This here is our motherland. We hold these areas deep in our hearts because we would like to pass it on to our unborn. Our history is not written, it's taught orally. Passed from generation to generation. Some of the ceremonies that we did here are still being practiced today. So it's up to us, the people, to retain the importance of the language. Uh, the, uh, to retain the songs of what related to here. When you extract anything from beneath you, is it still solid ground? If it's not, it's just a matter of time before it caves in. And that's our worry. Places like this, they're irreplaceable. Once they're gone, they're gone forever. So the Bureau of Land Management and the Department of Interior are going through a process to consider withdrawing 351,000 acres of land in a 10-mile zone roughly around Chaco Canyon from oil and gas leasing. If it was possible for us as indigenous people to protect this place, it would have been done a long time ago. Our voices aren't that powerful, so we have to rely on the federal government to help us with protection. Within the 10-mile zones around Chaco Canyon, 
There are 4,200 known archeological sites. This area has only been surveyed at about a 15% level. So as much as this is about buffering Chaco Canyon and protecting it from oil and gas, the resources in this zone specifically are incredibly important in their own right. The Navajo Nation government and Navajo Lattes are not in favor of 10 miles of ancestral protections. This is devastating to the Navajo community members here who are suffering from short-term and long-term illnesses related to oil and gas pollutions. Well, it's very important that the uh, 19 Pueblos come together. Uh, these landscapes have the connection to our continuation of who we are as Pueblo people. And it's all embedded in our songs, our prayers, of the importance of this place. There is oil and gas drillings at the footsteps of the ancestral homes. To us, the people are still here. We're here to help them, to look over them because of the natural materials that are still present in this landscape. Their thoughts and prayers within you and a feeling of strength and resolve to protect this place from people who want to destroy it. <laughs>